Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. In 1942, in the cold desert of a small border town of Texas, a group of kind are kidnapped and mass embraced by members of the fanatical sect, the Sabbat. Out of this group, only a handful survived, and through rituals and mentorship, they became the pack known as the Pill Riders. Representing the Sword of Cain, they are wielded by a mentor to cut deep wounds within the heartland of Mexico to the enemies of the Sabbat. Wars on Fire is a vampire the masquerade Sabbat chronicle that follows the Pill Riders pack that consists of Mitch, a Lazombra played by Adam, Coyote, a Ravenous anti tribute played by Alex, Eldrick, a Katif played by David, Jasper, a Bruja anti tribute played by Joaquin, Cora, a Shimizi played by Slavic, and Richard, a Venture anti tribute played by Tillman. If you'd like to contact us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. The sun's coming up in about 45 minutes. So uh, what we can do is we can uh, forward to the next day. Does it sound good to you guys? Sure. Yeah. Mitch, you kind of get the sense everyone is awakening and doing their thing at the moment. As, as Mitch hears everyone else shuffling around, he'll finish up. He'll get dressed back up in his dusty old clothes. He'll make his way upstairs, root around in the kitchen before he remembers that there's absolutely no need to make coffee. And then he'll <laughs> step outside. <laughs> As you step outside, you see uh, – Eldrick, are you staying inside, or were you going to go outside or, or after you fed? Yeah, uh, once I fed, I'll, I'll be waiting outside for everyone right. else because he's anxious to get this shit over and done with. So you see, you two see Eldrick come out, and then you see Mitch come out soon after him as you guys are kind of all standing in this – around that fountain area, like, you know, like right in front of the entrance. There's a, I described this as like a little fountain area. Then usually you guys do your stuff that's in front of the fountain. As you guys hear Mitch as he's the final one to leave. You know what? On second thought, I'm going to mm-hmm. heal myself up completely, yeah. the four four dots of damage. I'm going to drain yeah. this dry. All right, so you're going to heal up the four and then take four more? Yeah. And, yeah. and just, I mean. We'll count, we'll count that as the same humanity role, obviously, because she's dead. She's dead, you know, so. So you guys see Eldrick when he comes out. He doesn't have the gate that he normally has. He's actually walking upright. Not looking, I guess, lack of a better term, looking diseased, you know, looking like weak. He he, he kind of looks like he's uh, rejuvenated. But all right, go ahead. Scenes on you guys. Well, we do have a, a mission ahead of us, gentlemen, and an individual to uh, make an example of. Do we not, Mister Garrett? And his voice is definitely lighter than usual. Let's get in our vehicles and head into town. Do what must be done. What have you decided to do, then? We have made arrangements to make an example of Ramon. Eldritch makes a convincing case that uh, instead of provoking a war between us and the Cam and the Manarchs, we just take out the Giovanni instead, since they're the weaker of the three. Very well. You had me at take out. (laughs) Just point me where to go. And tell me who to kill. How are you guys going to drive about there? What's your plan of action? Like, what, like, what, what logistically? What are you going to talk about when you get there first, or how many cars are you taking? Same no, situation. I think, I think we should um, talk about it before going, so that we have a a, a line of attack before we get there. Jasper is right. back, so we're we're down a vehicle and we're down a person. And we just have the pickup right now. Did Jasper take your car? Yes, he did. I think we should go in just as if we were holding a meeting, ask to meet with him in private to discuss what we've come up with and just have someone block the door while everyone else pounds the crap out of him. Yeah, or just turn the lights yeah. off. We uh, we imagine that Eldritch would have more than one vehicle. Being yeah. The astutely yeah. rich individual he is. I, and I we decided that. that it won't be the hearse that he wanted. <laughs> what, what other two vehicles you guys are taking? Well, we'll take the pickup and, um, hell, um, whatever his other vehicle is, his other Royce. <laughs> All right, guys. Mitchell, so you guys are driving. And he's going to bring his uh, bayonet. He's going to bring his bayonet with him. All right. Are you guys bringing uh, yeah. uh, anything else? 
Anything else with you guys? Um, he, I'll have my Lugers with me, but honestly, I don't think he's he he doesn't believe that this is going to need any kind of like brute force. We're not going to go in there and shoot this guy up. I'll grab a <laughs> shotgun just in case. <laughs> It, it, right. If you need a gun, uh, I got a, I got a freaking Tommy gun. You can have a Tommy gun. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it, it's, it's old Chicago typewriter. So Mitch could drive the Royce, <laughs> and then you all guys can all be in the in the Rolls Royce together, or you can go in the truck with them, and someone can sit in the back, and you two can sit in the front of the truck with them. No, we're we're taking the Royce because Eldridge doesn't drive in the truck. You all right with that, Mitch? <laughs> Yeah, but he's going to drive the Royce like it's a beat-up old pickup. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Definitely not the smooth ride that uh, that you get when young Jasper, you know what I mean? Your guys' prodigy is in it. So you guys uh, start going down the same route that you went before. This time, though, I would think each in, in your individual ways are preparing for what you feel can be conflict. Because, mind you, none of you have had conflict as a group that you've had to resolve together. You each have, on your own ways, experimented with the dark gifts that you received from the blood of Cain. You know, you've never worked cohesively as a group to, to, to see what you were capable of. Now, each of you know and can pick up in your own ways that you were being meld, melded into a weapon, that Vidar took a, uh, took a, a personal goal to make sure you were mentored, and now he has set you free. It's different in the fact that when you rode there that that feeling of freedom that you guys felt, but this is more of a feeling that more Mr. Hyde and, and Mitch have felt in their, in World War One, and, and, and in different conflicts that they may have served in. You each, I don't know, I'm sure, are probably being withdrawn in your own ways or handling it however, but it's in the back of your head that you're, you're, you're heading towards conflict, albeit it of being a small conflict or whatever you may think it may be. So the the, the time seems to drag on a little bit more than when you first head there. But eventually you cross over to the border and the car in a shaky ride, by the way, down these desert roads. As you make your way further down south of Juarez and you find yourself about a block away. Is there any role playing that you guys want to do beforehand uh, going there? Or do you guys we can cut straight to there? Yeah, I might want a light snack. Are there any hitchhikers along the way? Uh, you can find like definitely because it's around like eight at night. You can find some like either drunk Texans or like migrants who are across. You know what I mean? Who, who? It's easy to find a body. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah, I just want a hitchhiker, someone we can you know throw in the back seat and then tank up off of when we get into town. Uh, yeah, I, I'll say that you guys see kind of like a hobo uh, who who's kind of walking along with his thumb up along the because the desert road that you guys travel is the one that's often used, you know. So to see someone out is is kind of um, it's kind of a, a rare opportunity. But yeah, there's one right there. As we get up to the hobo, I'll slow the car down. I'll roll down the window. Where are you headed? And the, and the guy pops his head in the passenger window. He's like, "I'm uh, heading to El Paso, sir. If you'd be so kind, I I got my daughter. She's ill there, and I've been traveling for work. And as he's talking, you can smell like cheap rye whiskey like coming off his breath and everything. I just uh, you know working and everything and trying to and he has like a like a kind of a, a cheap knapsack, you know, that's on his back, like like looks made out of uh like hemp like material, you know, and he just reeks of body odor and, and alcohol. All right, hop in the back. So who is someone sitting in the front? I take it like someone sitting in the front. I'm in the back. I'll sit in the front because I don't want to sit in the back with the rest of those three. And so he opens up and he sees Cora there and he kinda of like raises an eyebrow to Cora and then he sees like Coyote and you see him hesitate for a second, but then he, he kinda of gets in the car are you guys going to have him sit at the end or sit between you two or what? Between us. He can sit next to me. He's sitting between, <clears throat> between you guys. And you can tell he feels really tense. Like when the road hits off, there's just like this odd silence. And you hear his raspy breathing. He kind of looks at you, Coyote, and he looks at your ha- hand and he looks up at you. like, And, and you can see like the bloodshotness of his eyes and his, his raspy breathing. You guys can <laughs> you like, hear as he's like looking up at Coyote. I'll give him the most forced, awkward smile that I possibly can. You know, like the <laughs> fakest possible tooth grin. He just kind of like smiles. He looks forward. He just like looks at the road. He's like trying to like pray that this ride ends. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I'm not. Uh, uh, you can let me out out here, sir. I'm. I'm, uh, I, I'm a lot closer than I thought it was. We can't stop yet. I'll ask him <laughs> if he smokes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I. Yes, I smoke. 
Yes, I, yes, I smoke. Uh, sorry, right here is good. Right here is good. You see, you see a finger come out on the left on the left side of your face, Eldrick, as he's like pointing past your face to like the side of the road. Keep I'll your hand and in pull the it back, down. please, sir. <laughs> I'll grab his hand and pull it down. Hand quick. And then I'll put my half, half soggy, half smoked <laughs> cigar in his mouth. But like, try this. Hey, one. Kind of, and he's kind of like sitting there. He's like looking up as he has a cigar as the road peels off. You're getting closer to El Paso now. You can kind of see. Uh, 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 he pulls the cigar out, sir. I, you can drop me off right here. I'll sort of pull the car into the side of the road. I'll bear my fangs. Right, I'll, just, you know, I'll turn back to him. Whoa, whoa. You know, very, He's gonna, like, come here, son. Let an old man give you some advice. <laughs> you see his face. He's like, oh, oh. He's like, you see his mind because he saw fangs, and he's just the whole situation starting come to feel here, a little son. panicked right now. <laughs> come close. He like leans forward. He leans forward a little bit. Now, fly, boy. <laughs> I, I can see that you like your liquor, so let me give you. A bit of a lesson, and I will just wail and nail him right in the face. With the three of potency, he just his body snaps back. You can hear, you guys can hear the crunch, and he just like fall. He like slumps down between you two, Cora and Coyote. I'll take his hand and start feeding. Jesus Christ! Please don't. Someone pass me an arm or a leg or something. (laughs) Oh wow! So two people are feeding off him. Uh, Who else is feeding off him? Mitchell feed off of him once he gets a hold of a, an arm or a leg. What are you guys taking? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm taking three blood points to top off, and then I'm passing it to Mitch. Mitch will take four. Holy shit. Oh, All right, three. the guys, you hear his heartbeat slowing as you're feeding off him, Mitch. And eventually, uh, I need you to roll a conscious roll, please, difficulty eight. Oh, you motherfuckers, holding on to your humanity. Ah, success. Ah, all right, so you guys are, uh, after this figure is slumped down, you know, he's dead uh, between Cora and Coyote, you guys uh, cross the border. They don't even see, I take it, you guys try to hide the body, and big old Coyote could, like, just lean over, you know what I mean? You you get over no, the no, bridge. We'll, just, we'll throw him out the, we'll, we'll yeah. throw him out of the car. Oh, okay, even better. Eldrick, do you see the car stop? You see this Rolls Royce of yours be dispelled, this garbage is dispelled from it, from your pack mates. As the body drops the ground, and you just see dust fly off as you guys look behind where the body was at. Bitch or something. I'm gonna yeah. eyeball my upholstery in the back seat. <laughs> uh, surprisingly <laughs> not, there wasn't a lot of blood. Just a couple of blood spots, you know, from when Mitch punched him in the face, you know. All right, so you guys uh, go are about a block away right now from the black rooster. Park the car. Uh, Mitch will actually, uh, yeah, he'll be in his dusty clothes for this one. He'll walk to the black rooster. He'll try to conceal his bayonet. What about you guys? Are you guys following him? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we're going to go in and slowly. As you three follow him, you notice the crowds are starting to like part a little bit. You know what I mean? As you guys walk, like for some reason, these people are giving you space instinctually, which makes you even feel like more, one more fluid, cohesive unit, you know, as you guys are making your way towards there. And you well, get we to have the front. A seven of the... foot Mexican with us. <laughs> oh, that, that's true, too. Yeah. And you guys, uh, who's holding the hand of this little old lady, you know, as he's walking, as you guys make it to the front, I've already described the, the bar before to you guys. Are you guys going in? Yeah, we're going to go in. And Ramon was expecting us because I had told him that we'd yep. be coming back. Yep, yep. As you guys walk in, you see the same guy sitting by the door. And when he sees Cora, you see him stand up, like, quicker than you would think he'd be able to move, holding his hand, backing off. Have you learned your lesson? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, see, here. see, yes, ma'am. Your hand. You see him slowly, like, puts his bandage hand out to you. Yeah, I'll, you know, unbandage it and repair his yeah. hands, you know, make him separate. And... Now be a good boy, will you? Yeah, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. He's looking at his hands, you see him moving his fingers, and he's like, has a smile on his face. As as they, uh, the chick at the bar, the older lady sees you walking in, she, lo- she goes and she motions you guys to follow her. Let's go. All right. As you guys go behind the bar, you kind of go walking through the kind of area that I told you about before where their mattresses are. This time you're walking by the mattresses. There's like, there's no bodies in there now at this moment. You see that there's a door there and she opens up the door and you see this like old, like sh- just shitty kind of quality desk is sitting in there. And you see Ramon, he's sitting there now. This time he's actually wearing like a white suit with like a, uh, like it's all like completely white. Like his suits are trying to be like, fashionable for the day and age in like an flamboyant kind of way and uh you see that there's like an old couch and there's a couple chairs there and he stands up and he's like please come in my brother told me to speak to you guys what what can i he told me to help you in any way that i can 
Oh, thank you very much. I think uh, you can be a very much help. And I'll look at, to um, Coyote and expecting that he'll be closing the door. <laughs> I will close the door <laughs> and crack, crack my neck slightly. The door is closed. You see, he kind of like looks at you guys for a second. He's like, I didn't expect you to come in such a sign of force. You see, he looks a little worried. It's a dangerous <laughs> mission. Mitchell sort of stepped forward. The force is for later tonight. We got unpleasant business to attend to. So how can I help you? Well, I believe Eldritch was the one who made the arrangements, so I'll let him take the lead on this. Where, what kind of lighting is in this room? There's like a lamp, you know, not like not like a lot of lighting. Not a lot of lighting? Yeah, no, this is, there's a lamp. That's about it, you know? Just on his desk, or is it hanging? Oh, it's a hanging lamp. How high up is it? Uh, I would say about eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah. So I'll I'll take my my cane and hold it at one very end, and I'll step up underneath it. <sighs> you people, it's oh so bright in here, and I'll lift my cane up and shatter the bolt. All right, let's uh our first combat, gentlemen. Everyone, roll initiative. Oh uh, yeah, one dice, and you add your wits and uh, alertness right to it. Okay, dexterity plus wits. The highest one is Mitch, and then... Now we have to declare actions. Starting with the lowest, so that would be David. Eldrick. Mr. Hyde will be using Obtenebration Level 3 to right. create tentacles to attack this motherfucker. All right, and what is required to do that? I will spend a blood pool point and roll Manipulation plus Occult, difficulty 7. And then each success creates a, a single tentacle. Each tentacle is six feet long, possesses strength and dexterity rating equal to my character's of tenebration roll, which is three. And then they okay, so attack you... individually. So I can attack with all of them. Gotcha. That makes all sense. All right. Uh, so, th- yeah. So you're going to do that. And then the next one is, what are you going to do, Coyote? I'm going to protect uh, Cora. And wait to see what happens. Like, I will stand near her and wait for any hostility towards her. Okay. Next is... Oh, the questionable thing. You're going to see there is... You guys start noticing that in front between you and Ramon that there's a a figure that that slowly starts to, like, kind of oddly take shape. And it's this, like, visage of... A naked, like, like body of a, of a, of a female of like maybe 40 years of age who has like the bottom part of her jaw is, has been like ripped out. And it looks like, like she's had like her chest ripped open in a way. Like there's like a gap there, but you can't see anything in there, but, but you don't see blood, but you see these pure black eyes that, that ring of like something that you guys have never felt or, or seen or witness before as she's crouched down on the desk and she goes leaping towards whoever is closest uh, at the moment, which I believe is Mitch at the moment, right? Cause Mitch, you went and stepped forward or yeah, Mitch stepped forward. Next is Cora. What are you doing? She'll probably try to grapple him. Like run and tackle him and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. He notices that you're trying to, to tackle him and he's going to try to dodge out of the way to make sure that, you know, you can't pin him down to the ground. What are you going to do, Mitch? Mitch is going to attempt to grapple him as well. All right. So we got all of our actions here. He's also, oh, excuse me, he's uh, pumping blood into his, he's going to pump two blood into to his strength. All right. So you go ahead, Mitch. Go ahead. Let's do for grappling, dexterity and brawl, difficulty uh, six. six. Is this our first ever combat in like three seasons of yeah. the show? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. First ever, That's dude. Excellent. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, I, I like you, it. You know, you need more successes than the opponent's strength. Okay. Mitch is going to drop two blood into Dex. Actually, make that three. He'll go balls to the wall on this one. So go ahead. You spent the blood. And one, two, three. Yep. You need it five. So you go up and you try to grab him, and he just kind of like pushes you off to this as he steps to the side there, like pushes you off, and you kind of like bump into the, the corner of the desk. As he looks and he sees Cora coming, running up, and tackling him, he's going to try dodging her. So how does that work with the dodge? He has to roll more successes than you, right? If a, cha- a character is battling multiple opponents in combat, that character's attack and dodge difficulties are increased by one per opponent. Just so okay. Oh, wow. Holy shit. I didn't know that. So one, two, three. 
So plus three. So, okay, what does he need to roll the dodge? Oh, dex plus dodge. Oh, yeah, dex plus dodge. Greater than your successes, right? But he's going to have a plus three on his. He's plus nine. He's going to drop a willpower point. Boom. I'm going to drop a blood point into dex. Four plus two is six. Uh... Oh, dude, no, he botched, man. So as, uh, I'm not even going to make you roll, he botched, man. Okay. Yeah, okay. So... Uh, as you go, like, you see Mitch comes rushing up to him to grab him, and he, like, shoves Mitch to the side, and Mitch, like, hits his, you know, like, hits on the side of the desk. But when he's standing there, like, right here's his right open, and you're just, like, you just dive. You guys see, like, Cora just take him out, like, boom, hit the ground. He hits, and you just see him go, oh. And so let's do, uh, we'll do strength and bashing damage, but I will, he already has, like, t- two bashing damage from the, 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 the the botching of it. Uh, okay, so just strength, right? Yeah, just strength. Oh, oh, nice. Three plus five. Divide it, so that's two. So he needs to roll his stamina to try to see if he can get it. He doesn't have fortitude. So uh, this motherfucker. So you sit there and you land on top of him, and you just hear him like you know, you feel like you can hear like a little cracking a little bit for a second, and then but you're still got him pinned to the ground right now. So the spirit is going to, you see Mitch, as you hit the side of the desk, you see this face, it comes right up on top of you, like right next to your face, right? Like you sit there and you hit the desk and you turn around to look and it's like, boom, right in front of you, like comes out, like almost like it's taken aback because like right when you're looking at Korra tackle, that's when the face shows up. All right, let's go ahead and do, it's going to do an attacking is dexterity plus brawl, boom, two successes. Well, then it's just going to go ahead and it's going to to attempt to, like, attack you by, you know what I mean, attacking your face, which uh, is claw aggravated damage. Is this going to claw at me? Yeah, it's going to, like, claw at you in a way. But, like, it doesn't have claws, but you know what I mean? It's going to try to, like, reach towards you to cause damage of a type. So that's strength, which is... Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's going to roll three dice because it adds one because of extra success. And one success. So do you have fortitude? All right, so as it comes across you, so you're sitting there, Cora tackles him, you turn around to the look, and also his face is right there, and you're like, oh, shit, and it, like, reaches towards you with his hands, and you can feel his hands, like, rake across the side of your neck, almost, like, touching your vocal cords in a way, and his hand slides through, and you feel this burning sensation that makes you want to, like, scream out in pain as the as it just kind of comes across and comes out the other end there. All right, so next we have, so go ahead and mark one aggravated there, good sir. Who's next? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what are you going to do there, uh, Mr. Coyote? You see Granny just tackle that dude to the <laughs> ground as he's, like, pinned down underneath her. He's, like, not getting up. Okay. I, I mentioned that I would be protecting Cora, but it seems like she can take care of herself. Am I able to do something else? Yeah, yeah and I think to do something else, don't you have – there's something about changing your action. I think it's spending the willpower, right? Uh, so, you have to roll willpower. Current willpower or max? Current roll four dice difficulty six. Yep, and you got success, so you can change it now. What are you trying to do? Okay, so how's Mitch doing? He's got claws clutching around his throat. Well, no, it's it's not even claws. It's like a hand. Like you can see, it's kind of disturbing to you. But you see, like it's just like you see how my neck is right here. Imagine mm-hmm. if a hand just went along the side of it, and part of it's sticking out, but part of it's going in, and it just like yeah. drug through his flesh like that. And you can see like oh, his see. skin like. Like it's almost like burning away a little bit when that yeah. happened. I will grab the wrist that is doing that, and I will squeeze as hard as I possibly can. Oh, all right, sweet. So, um, <laughs> can you grab a grace wrist? So go Lots ahead, yeah. Give me a, of course, yeah. Yeah, give me a dex and brawl difficulty six. Two success. So the hand, the hand, the hand goes through, and you're like, oh shit, my fucking pack leader, and you go to grab the hand that did it to stop it from happening, and you find your big paw just like <laughs> that goes through it, and you're like, what the fuck. And as you see, and you see, like, you're looking, like, behind Mitch's head, right? Uh-huh. And you see the face, like, turning around. Now the face is looking at you. So the face went, like, right here was looking at Mitch. The hand went through. You grab mm-hmm. the hand. And then the face goes, and now it's looking at you, like, what the fuck? All angry. And you're like, holy shit. And you see these eyes. These eyes look like the bottomless pits of hell, dude. Like, it just this is not a good feeling at all, you know? I want to spit the butt of my cigar at its face. Like, <laughs> Is it look- you could do that. You know what I mean? It goes. Is anything in your mouth? Yeah, it goes. 
<laughs> it goes shooting through, you know, the, the ghost's face. <laughs> All right. So next, uh, let's get to the uh, tenebration. All right. Roll. Let's let's do the roll. Yeah. Manipulation and occult difficulty seven. And I'm going to spend a willpower point to get a success. Right. So you got one tentacle. I have one tentacle. Ooh. All right, so the one cancels out the ten, so I'm going to have a total of four tentacles. All right. Now, these four tentacles, you guys notice as you spit the cigar, and you're all, and you're each of your own involved, you notice, like, the room just gets dark. I mean, you can still, like, see there's little light coming through from under the door. You know what I mean? But, like, feel this unearthly, like, slither, right? And you don't feel comfortable with the coyote, and you don't feel comfortable with it, Cora. But Mitch, <laughs> like this calms you in a way. Even though instinct, you don't have a uh, tenebration, you're still instinctively tied to it. You know what I mean? And you find like it's almost like a warm embrace of your mother or, or like smelling your mother's perfume when you can feel these tentacles are starting to, 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 to come into existence. Ramon can't see it, and you guys can't really tell the reaction. Oh, well, they're yeah, shadowy. Yeah. I mean, they're they're pitch yeah. black. They're they're made of the abyss. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, which you which that's what brings the comfort is the abyss to you. There does it take a turn to call them, and then you can use them the next turn. It, it doesn't say. It just says refining control over darkness. The kindred can create prehensile we'll tentacles. Say, we'll say take. We'll take a turn to create them. You know what I mean? Because it's three seconds for a turn. They've came yeah, into but- existence at the moment. Go ahead. Controlling the tentacles does not require complete concentration. Blah blah blah. Yeah, so, they, so I can do other actions, and they all attack. All right. So next turn, you can do an action, and then they will attack next turn. Does it sound good to you guys? Okay. So all right. So now we're going to announce the next turns. What are going to happen next? So the first is going to be you, uh, Mr. Hyde. We already know your tentacles are going to be doing their magic. What about you? Uh, I'm going to be pulling out my Luger because after I grab him, I'm going to pop some caps into him. Nice. All right. And then uh, next, what are you doing, Coyote? How do you kill a wraith? I've... <laughs> yeah. I don't know this. Yeah, yeah. No one knows. Yeah. I'm going to blindly swat at the, the wraith. I'm staying in character here. I'm, I'm not the smart, sharpest tool in the shed. The wraith now is going to go ahead and it's going to look at you right now. And it's going to delve into your mind. So we'll, we'll find out what happens next there, uh, Mr. Coyote. <laughs> next is going to be Cora. What are you doing, Cora? Well, Cora will be trying to sink her fangs into... Uh, oh, shit, dude. Cora's going straight for some of that personal blow. What generation are you, by the way, Cora? 11. 11. Oh, this might, this might work out for you. He's going to try to get you off top of him. You know what I mean? Because yeah. well, We have to roll you. strength plus brawl anyway, both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an opposed. And then what are you doing, Mitch? Yeah. And then what are you doing, Mitch? Mitch is going to use the tackle combat maneuver on Ramon. Okay, gotcha. Like just like spear him. He's he's already on the ground with Cora on top. You're just gonna try to like hold him down and shit like that. But yeah, he's gonna just outright tackle him. Uh, Let me read it off here. The attacker rushes her opponent, tackling him to the ground. He's already on the ground. Yeah, he's already on the ground. The attack rolls at a plus one difficulty, and the maneuver inflicts strength plus one damage. Additionally, both combatants must roll dex plus athletics, difficulty seven, or suffer a knockdown. Even if the target's athletics roll succeeds, he is unbalanced, suffering a plus one difficulty to his actions for the next turn. Do the initial attack roll. What's the initial attack roll? Dex plus Uh, what? It's strength plus brawl. Difficulty four, because he's already on the ground with Korra pinned on top of him. Okay. One success. <laughs> Just yep. enough. Oh, plus the three. Yeah, four successes. Holy shit. So then what's damage? Because you're going to have plus three to damage now, too. Damage is strength plus one. So you're going to have strength plus four and then add three for your potents. Holy shit. One, two, three, four. Four successes. Plus, plus three, seven. Get cut, cut in half three. He only has three dice to soak. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, so he soaks two. So you sit there and you're just like, bam! You know what I mean? You land on top of him. You could you could see you caused a little damage to where he's down a health bubble. It's just bruised and vampires, man. That's how they you know what I mean? That's why they're magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't want you to think I'm trying bastards. to Yeah, resilient <laughs> bastards. But now like you're on top of him, boom. And he's like, what the fuck? So he's gonna try to get Coral and you off top, which yeah. is almost I'm gonna say next to impossible yeah, at this we moment. You have dude. to make an opposed strength plus brawl roll. And whoever right. accum- accumulates more successes may immobilize the other. 
he's definitely going to have impactful uh, negatives because he has two people on him right now, you know, in a second to let him just go straight for So it's, I, I'll pop a willpower for this, definitely. So he said strength plus brawl? Three successes. He tries to get you off, but you're able to barely hold him down, but you hold him down right now. So it's your turn now. Pop a blood point into strength, and I bite. Dexterity plus brawl. All right, go ahead and roll it. Oh, uh, three successes. So you sink your teeth in, and at that moment, you can just feel like uh, you feel him starting to like fight you for a little bit, and you feel that he gives in to the pleasure that he feels at the moment as you slowly start draining his blood. As that happens, and let's do the – what's the willpower for? Because it's spirit smack. Willpower five is going to change its – yeah, I got success. It's going to attack Korra, which is – through Mitch? Uh, oh, yeah, through Mitch, right? Damn it. It's going to try. That's true, right? Uh, damn, he just threw it under the bus, Mitch. Um, <laughs> uh, well, let's see what happens. Right. Difficulty five. Gets two successes. It's going to try to roll damage, which is strength, which is only two. No successes, man. You feel that eerie feeling again, Mitch, as his hand, his hands go into your shoulders and it goes through, but you don't feel any damage this time. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, shit, 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 here it comes again. But you still feel disheartened on it. All right. So then we will go to Coyote next. Coyote, you see Grandma is taking care of, of – you kind of make out Grandma with Mitch on top is taking care of the piss knob, and you see that Spirit's trying to attack Mitch from behind. Is it still probing my brain? No, no, it was going to, but that was its action, but it rolled willpower to change its uh, action when it saw that piss knob gotcha. was in – Ramon was getting <laughs> diabolized. Um, oh and by the God. way, you got three blood pool, Cora, from that. Um, oh, God. I don't know how to kill a wraith. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to continue pouring furiously at to it. To attack it? Yeah. Right now, Eldrick, you see, like, there's a dog pile on top of Like, you know what I mean? And you see Cora feeding off the piss knob. The tentacles, because they do lethal damage, right? Um, or do they just do bad? Lethal damage. Yeah, yeah. So it's not aggravated. Okay. You see the tentacles, though, go and they, they, they swarm around the, 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 the figure that's trying to attack Mitch. You know what I mean? Like, it's, they're, they're, it's almost like a weird sense in the fact that something of this reality is imbuing itself with something of another reality because that's really what the abyss is, right? And you can see, like, it's, they're shooting through almost like projectiles and they're, and, they're, and they're twisting themselves and they're bodying themselves within the spirit and like then, then they're pulling themselves apart to where like parts of the spirit are like being dragged off while it's trying to stay solidified. It's almost like you're almost taking like a puddle of water and you're trying to go like this. You know what I mean? To get some of the water out, but some of the water comes back in and takes its original form. That's Can what's I make going an on right now. Roll to, to figure out a way to attack this thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me uh, an intelligence and a cult difficulty eight. Probably just going to be kill the guy. Rip his fucking head off. Yeah. Uh, one success. So you kind of like, you know that the easiest way to get rid of a wraith is to kill whatever's keeping it tied to the mortal realm. I know? was right. Rip the fucker's head off. Four tentacles. Go for the head. We'll Definitely. pop his head off. Now the te- <laughs> yeah, the tentacles were causing damage to it, though, to the wraith. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm just letting you know at this moment, you know? It can keep two tentacles, and two tentacles, two tentacles will keep gotcha. it busy, and two tentacles yeah. will tear the piss and knobs, fucking piss and head off. Definitely. So okay, so we'll say that the tentacles come in, and you're kind of lost in it, Cora, while you're feeding off him. But you see, Mitch, like tentacles start swarming up, and it's like wrapping one wraps around his forehead because right now his head is like his head's like this, and Cora's on it. And you see tentacles are starting to, like, wrap around his head, two of them. And you see them constricting. You're, like, you're literally, Mitch, like, like maybe 12 inches away. You know what I mean? Like, you're looking right at this happening. Uh, you can even smell, like, the cheap, like, wall. You can smell the cheap perfume that Cora sprays on herself to, like, like to match, match her age. Like, you can smell on the back of her neck, and you can see, you can see these things, and they, you look at them up close. You look at these these tentacles, and they you're and you're like almost hypnotized, like you almost want to fall into them when you're staring at it because it's not pure black. It's it's, it's something other, that, but that's something that's deep inside you that you that you sense whenever you're around Vida, uh, Vidar too. You know what I mean? Like the sense of belonging when you see that. All right. And just so. to add to the creepiness, 
the the end of one of the tendrils wrapped around him yeah. will enter into his mouth. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like filling his throat. His throat's like welling up because it's being pushed open. So let's do uh, <laughs> strength rolls. What's your strength right now? My strength or its strength? Its strength is three. Yeah. Its strength is three? All right. It does so strength two of them. plus one uh, lethal damage. So it'll be four dice. So it did three on one and then two on the other. So it can try to soak the first three, but it can't soak the last two. It soaks the first three, but the last two. You can hear, Mitch, as you're staring at you hear a cracking in his throat. Like you hear, you see like the, while the while it's while it's like this, you can see it's like almost angling out more. Like it's like its head starting to get disconnected from its spinal column a little bit, and you could hear a couple of the vertebrae have been like snapped apart a little bit. As that is not ripped off, but it's definitely like disjointed a little bit, almost like if you've ever popped your shoulder out of socket. You know, it has a little bit of that feeling right now, but it can't feel what's going on to it because core is latched on. All right, next round. Uh, what are you going to do, Mister? Uh, what about Hyde? the attacks on the um, on the ghost? Oh yeah, on the uh, on the ghost. Yeah, let's do those two. Sorry, good call. Thank you. Two successes, two successes, and one success. So let's see what it has here. Boom, one. So you see, as as you're sitting there, and you can kind of see this too, Coyote, when. You're like trying to go swipe at its back. You see these tentacles come and just it, it blows your mind for a second because, in a way, it touches upon that inner the inner gift that you have with chemistry and being able to like cause illusions. But this is different, man. This is like realness from somewhere that you've ne- you don't know, you can't comprehend it. Like your mind can't comprehend, but you see these tentacles come through and start ripping this thing, and you hear this howling, screeching pain, like like it's piercing your ears. You even feel like blood start coming down one of your ears just because you can't take hearing it, but it seems like no one else can hear it, you know, as you're sitting there swiping, but it, feel, it looks like it's being ripped apart, and you see it look behind in a way. Its head turns unnaturally and is looking straight at you while these tentacles are starting to rip apart, but it's like it's fighting to stay Stay composed, you know, for lack of a better term. So next uh, roll, uh, next, what are you doing, uh, Elder, for your next turn? I'm going to make sure I have ammo in my gun. <laughs> You're like, this isn't going to last too long. I got a feeling. This is all just stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? Put, doing put it with back that? in my, make sure it's in, you know, put it in my holster. Look, watch at these guys. It's like, man, this is a whole bunch of effort. What are you, what are you doing, Coyote? So how did my last round go? I, it was pretty un, unsuccessful, right? Yeah. You're realizing you're not doing anything, but these tentacles are, though. But okay. then you see two tentacles are reaching and grabbing the head of the Ramon. I like, like, seems to be yanking it in a way. Oh, okay. I'm cool with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so Grandma's okay. Ramon's getting his head popped off. Yeah, but the spirit's still... It's getting ripped apart, but it's looking right at you right now nearest flammable object in the room i'll hurl at the wraith there's not a flammable object currently at the moment but you can like take uh, shit from the desk and like try to throw yeah. it or something like that I'll, I'll take something from the desk and throw it i'll just uh, hurl like a desk lamp at the wraith the wraith is going to go ahead and it's like coming towards you coyote but you see that like you just feel your, its eyes are getting close to you boring down on you next is huh, he's not doing anything uh, he's just gonna sit there and take it <laughs> Cora, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to keep sucking. All right. And Mitch, what are you doing? Mitch will, uh, well, where is Cora gnawing on Ramon? His neck. Mitch is going to slam his bayonet into Ramon's chest. Oh, so you pull it out, squam, slam it. You're just, you're just going like ballistic on it. You're not really trying to aim. You're just kind of like hoping to, you just want to fuck him up, right? He just wants to go straight through him, straight through him. Yeah, yeah. All right. Go ahead and do uh, Dex and Melee difficulty fucking three. So that's three successes. Your your damage is going to be strength plus two, and then add your potents. Do I get the plus one for it being a uh, knife? Oh, is there a plus one for being a knife? Yeah. Then go yeah. ahead. So that's six. Oh, yeah. He's not coming back from that. So that's and seven. You, you slam. You're like, ah, oh, you're like, whack into it. You know what I mean? Like, into it. Like, is it into his heart or like? It's not going to get steak anyway. It's not a steak. Yeah, Yeah, it's not a steak anyway. It's going to take off half his blood pool if he does. 
No, he's not. He's not. Ste- he's not staking his heart. No, he's just like staking. You, you hear old ass Mitch just like all of a sudden be like, "God damn!" He just like fucking takes his bayonet and just like fucking sinks it into like the side right, like right below his right side of his body, which is exposed, and just slams it in. And you, you feel like you see his body just like this. Ramon, his body just lock up, and you see it kind of like it re- starts from what you can tell from the parts that aren't swallowed by abysmal or abyssal um, tentacles or, or whatever, but you just, you could feel it becoming more rigid than it was when she was feeding off of it. So, all right, Cora, let's do ourselves a little Diablo roll right here. Guy, how about yeah. that? I'll, I'll, Tell me what we need to roll here. Strength difficulty nine. Uh, once the vampire's body has been drained of all blood, the true struggle begins. The Diabloist player makes an extended strength roll, difficulty 9. If each success inflicts one automatic health level on the victim, when all the victim's health levels have been drained, the victim's essence is taken. So you need seven successes, right? Okay, go ahead and roll. I'll pop a willpower. Uh, all right. Uh, two successes. Two successes. So you feel right now... Like, like, as you sit there, you feel like his blood is gone, but you feel yourself being, like, drawn into him, and you feel, like, almost like you're trying to tug him and pull him into you. It's this weird metaphysical out-of-body experience that you're, that you're currently having right now where you don't, you're not even aware of anything along. And it's not even like a – it's not even like when I say out-of-body, I don't mean like, yo, there's a little Cora trying to pull a little Ramon yeah. into her. It's it's you can't explain it. It's it's it's, it's almost instinctual, but like a biological in in a way. You know, mm-hmm. like it's it's just your force is trying to to pull everything into you along with the blood right now. Uh, this is why it's addictive because you can't explain to it. It's almost like asking a heroin addict explain to me the first time you used heroin, and all they're gonna say is like, "Well, this is good." Chasing the dragon kind of thing. So goes ahead and it looks at you, Coyote, and as you're standing, like, "Oh shit! Oh fuck! Fuck!" All of a sudden, you see the wraith. It just like stops, and, you, and it looks. And it ha- you see this like the, the the eyes like slowly start shutting, and then all of a sudden you see it like just just like it, it almost becomes like someone threw like uh, a, a handful of light snow. Yeah, it's like p- fine powdered snow. You know what I mean? Like someone Did just kind of like threw a little bit. Like, threw the lamp at it. No, no, the lamp didn't happen yet. But but good call. Yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah. Just, no, that's not the case. I apologize. All right. So next move is Eldrick. You see the, the the spirit disappear, and you see you feel your tentacles like are yanking at it, and you hear. And we're gonna do this. And how I'm gonna do it, just so you know, Slavic, you're still gonna be able to diabolize, but I'm just gonna let the head be ripped off for dramatic effect. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. So the you hear retching. You see this Mitch after you slam the thing and you're looking. You see the head go quack and just come off. And you see the shadows just like kind of fall back towards Eldrick as you're looking. It's almost like watching a streamer in the air. <laughs> and you and you see like the tentacle go back and you see Eldrick there just standing there menacing. I'll, yeah. I'll have the tentacle, the tendrils bring his head to me. So I'll reach out with my arm yeah. and have the, the head laid into my palm of my hand. Boom, and it sits there as you see it. So we are going to do uh, – you guys – we can say the next actions. Are you going to let Cora go about her thing, or or do you mind if we go to that? Or is there? I, I don't want to assume shit. So no, I think I think Eldritch is like just fine with like yeah, I got his head. We're we're done. All right. I mean, what been, like, whatever. Mitch is fine waiting on Cora. Yeah, I'm cool with that. <laughs> All right, do your roll again, Cora. Yeah, and we'll just I'll assume another, you got it. Another blood All right. point for six All strength right. plus another willpower point. And I ignored the one, so two more successes. So you're at four now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will give you the next three since no one, you know what I mean? Uh, no one is interrupting at the moment, and uh, he can't really do anything at yeah, this okay. moment because he's in four or four. Yeah. So let's talk about what you get. First, you lose a dot in humanity, automatic oh. loss of humanity right there. So you're at who three right that? now. Yeah, who needs that? You don't roll. Do you roll again, or do you, is it just automatic loss? It's automatic. It's automatic. If okay, it's automatic uh, if, loss. Yeah, uh, the murder was. If I would have murdered him in a some sort of, of uh, I don't know. Uh, you know that may hold on. That, that, very you bring, heinously. I you bring can up roll a point. Again. Uh, you bring up a point. So I won't make you roll again, but I'm going to make Mitch roll again. 
I'm going to make Eldrick roll conscious difficulty eight. Coyote, you not because you're just fighting a wraith, throwing lamps and shit. Mitch, you drop one down. So you're down All to right. what, five now? All right. <sighs> yep. So you're down to four, right? Yeah. So you drop down to generation 10. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. And- I have to roll self-control. Difficulty 10 minus my humanity. Plus plus difficulty I have for lunacy. So I have to roll uh, self-control difficulty 9. Oh, Jesus. Slender willpower. Slender willpower. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Hey. You see, you guys see when Cora lifts her head, you kind of see like her eyes roll in the back of her head. And you get this like weird feeling around because, by the way, Diablers feel weird. People feel yeah. weird around Diablers. Yeah, but you only this... if you have high humanity, which I don't oh, think okay. anyone here yeah. has. She, you kind of see her eyes roll in the back of her head, and her whole body shakes for a second. And you could tell like she's fighting the beast at this moment. You see her jaw start extending for a little bit, but then it like it come. She pulls it within her, and she compartmental compartmentalizes it. So she's down to generation ten. And you have roll me, roll me. Uh, you'll get the potential to learn a dis- the first thought of one or two disciplines, depending if you roll odd or even. Five. Oh, so necromancy. You have the potential to spend XP once this story arc is done to learn the first thought of necromancy. Actually, if you that'll be useful because um, I might have go Cora convert to the path of death and soul, and those guys want necromancy. So that'll be actually. There you go. So. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts, or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called White Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong, and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. Hi, Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. (laughs) 